Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Geek Out with Perry. We haven't geeked out with you in a while, and we're thrilled to be back with a great topic high availability and important aspects to help achieve it. This is not only something that's important for us to consider and running our Exchange Online service, but incredibly important to you and all of our customers. As I mentioned, Perry, high availability is really important. We've talked about this before. So when running the service, what do we think about um, to make sure that we keep it up all the time? Well, availability in the context of the service is something that's been uh, pretty interesting over the last few years. We've built uh, the service. You know, we're approaching tens of, you know, we have tens of millions of mailboxes in our service, and we've just launched our Office 365 uh, uh, service for, for businesses. Um, mm -hmm. It's all being run by the Exchange engineer Engineering team. Uh, so uh, there's been a set of things that, um, uh, of expertise that we've developed over the last few years uh, uh, building the service that's a little different than some of the areas of focus that we've spent on um, on premise. By and large, however, most of the things that uh, we've always done translate very nicely uh, into uh, into the service, and certainly uh, the rigor necessary to be successful there really did help us a lot in uh, in getting to the service. Okay, so what are At those the, topics? All right, so. Um, at the broadest level, when you think about availability, I think this sort of breaks down into uh, three important things that you really need to think a lot about. The first one, frequency. Another one is the uh, length of an outage. And finally, there's the scope or size of an outage. Okay. okay? So starting with frequency. Uh, this is the this is the classic uh, engineering focus that almost any uh, software or systems engineering team is going to spend a lot of time worrying about. Uh, every single uh, issue they run into, they're going to drive to root cause and eliminate the, the core issue. This is the thing that uh, is about finding every single bug before you ship. Make sure it, it's gone, right? Mm -hmm. In, as you uh, move away from selling software to running it, um, you realize there's several other things that are important to spend a lot of engineering time in as well. Um, when you think about the frequency, you, you realize that uh, you know, an outage that's a second long, even if it's frequent, is not as important as outages that are hours long, even yeah. if they're very rare. So making sure that the, uh, the length of outages, uh, uh, if they ever occur, uh, are kept to a minimum is uh, really important. And there's, there's two really important parts of this. One is the time to discover. Okay. Right? And this is all about monitoring. Mm -hmm. And this is sort of, and the other one is time to repair. Okay, the service okay. is up, it's running, something happened, you know, hard drive failed. Um, uh, somebody made a mistake about um, uh, configuring the, the network. Uh, somebody pulled the uh, the power plug on a data center yep. um, with a backhoe. Uh, <laughs> what do you do uh, to get it back up? Right. Okay. Um, we've talked a little bit about at the storage level uh, all the systems that we've built in to provide lots of redundancy mm -hmm. and making sure that that redundancy is sufficiently separated so that. Uh, any uh, failure mode really uh, can be handled quite nicely. But the monitoring part and the feedback loop between these two things is, is one of the, the key things that takes a lot of focus. But then the, the third one is something that I think often goes a little unnoticed in many engineering orgs, mm -hmm. which is this idea around isolation and spending a lot of time thinking about isolation and amplification. So is this the potential snowball effect issue? Yeah, it's a key part of it. When you're building big services, mm -hmm. one of the uh, attractive parts of it is the ability to get big economies of scale. Yeah. You're putting lots of organizations into, um, into uh, shared resources and making big cost savings for customers. It allows us to give 25 gig mailboxes at very good prices uh, to, to customers and provide uh, services they wouldn't normally be able to afford. Okay. But uh, when you're doing that, you want to do it in a way that doesn't create the potential for taking down uh, everybody. everybody. Mm -hmm. 
not only because it uh, makes the, the, uh, the amount of downtime greater, but also the bigger the failure, the harder it is sometimes to actually repair effectively, right? Mm -hmm. um, there's only so many resources, there's only so much bandwidth that you have available. So um, thinking through isolation and amplification uh, are key parts. The final key point here is on the amplification side, you can imagine that if you have automatic systems that discover problems and fix them in tight loops, mm -hmm. that you, your fix can create an amplification, right? So let's say uh, you had an automatic system that recovered from uh, uh, data failures by copying data. Mm -hmm. uh, if your monitoring system made a mistake mm -hmm. and identified uh, a storage failure, and you didn't have uh, limits on the amount of uh, copies you would start making to fix things up, you can imagine filling up your whole system with redundant, unnecessary copies trying to fix uh, a mistakenly identified uh, um, issue. issue. So what do we do in order to help prevent that sort of scenario from happening to us? Right. So we've spent an awful lot of time thinking about our isolation models. Okay. Right? Um, and here's an important part about the idea of defense in depth. You know, we, uh, uh, the encapsulation, at, there's strong encapsulation at the mailbox level, mm -hmm. strong encapsulation at uh, the database level, mm -hmm. um, at the server level. Then you need to start thinking about the redundancy you have um, uh, for copies. But again, they are limited to within a certain set of servers, which we call the database availability group we've talked about. Yep. Uh, so the impact of uh, recovery uh, going awry is necessarily isolated to a single DAG, and <laughs> we've got hundreds of DAGs deployed in, in, the, in the service. So that's uh, an example of one way in which we think through the encapsulation and isolation to make sure we don't get big snowball effects. The other one is, really thinking hard through uh, all of the operations that we have in our system. Okay. We built a very robust set of uh, automation and think about the set that can be uh, deeply destructive, Okay. right? Um, you can think about that as t things when you're gonna delete things. Mm -hmm. uh, you can also think that when you're gonna th write large quantities of data mm -hmm. uh, and making sure that there are the right circuit breakers involved uh, so that automatic systems aren't enabled to go and do large destructive operations in bulk. So um, these are the places in which we've probably beefed up uh, the engineering excellence and focus over the last three years, um, and, uh, uh, and certainly the ability to uh, leverage uh, the work that we used to do uh, for this sort of thing. And um, one of the key things to think about is the reason this is an area that's a little bit different than services in the on-premise world, things like scope and size naturally got an automatic level of isolation. Mm -hmm. Each company was fully segregated from every other company, right? So it was very difficult to get a snowball effect that took out many independent companies mm -hmm. based on one design decision. Um, uh, but when you're running a big service, uh, this becomes a, a much more important part of the service. Okay. So I'm glad that we are able to think about all these things and maybe discussing how uh, engineering has evolved because of this is a good topic for another session. It isn't just the software. There's a whole uh, human process uh, involved in running the service, uh, and that is certainly another part of uh, the culture change that's uh, come to the exchange team over the last few years. Great. Thanks for that explanation, Perry. Thanks, Anne. And thanks for everyone for watching. Don't miss Perry's blog for more information on this topic and others. We'll have plenty of other videos and discussion topics soon, but please give us additional feedback and ideas. Thanks.